Well, hello everybody. Now, most of you will know that I've been involved in running photography competitions for seven or eight years now, firstly with Bird Photographer of the Year and more recently with Wild Art Photographer of the Year. And I've noticed over these years that there are sort of five common mistakes that people uh, can make when they enter photo competitions. So I thought I'd list those five mistakes and try and give you an insight as to what to avoid when entering a, a photography competition. So number one on my list is something that I call similars. Now this is something I, I could have been guilty of myself in the past, is that we've all been there. You get this amazing piece of light or this amazing bit of action happening in front of you and you rattle off dozens and dozens of frames. And when you get back to the computer, you can't decide which one is the best image. And you know it'll be great for a competition. But instead of editing down and just choosing the one frame, even if it isn't the frame that the judges would find favorite, perhaps, uh, you enter four or five. Now, what that is doing is you are creating competition for yourself. And if you've got a number of judges judging a category and you have four or five similar pictures, what will happen, and I can guarantee it happens every single time, is that every judge will choose a different picture as their favorite. So they will, you'll split the vote and then you'll fall out of that initial cut because you just won't get enough backing because you've created that competition for yourself. The thing about photography competitions is, however good an image you think you're entering, you have no idea what the competition is. So don't create competition for yourself. Pick one frame from a sequence and enter that one. So number two on my list is what I call copycat images. Now judges love originality when, they, when it comes to photo competitions. They love seeing things they've never seen before, an approach they've never tried themselves. Uh, and what often happens is that when you get one of those images and it does really, really well in a competition, and I can think of one really great example for that, and that's diving gannets. You know, the first time that I saw, you know, that sort of half in, half out of the water diving gannet shot where it's grabbing the fish, you know, it blew me away and it blew a lot of the other judges away that saw it as well. Uh, but then what happens is that people see that winning and then they copy the approach. So the next year we had loads of diving gannet images entered in the competition. But the thing about that is that it's kind of lost its, you know, it's lost its initial appeal because it's not original, because we've seen it before. So as amazing as those images could be, and they could even be better than that original image from the previous year, but judges have already seen it. So it's, it's not original enough. And it, you may get, you know, commended, highly commended. You know, you may get awarded in some way, but if you want to win or you want to get into a prized position, then avoid copycat images. Now the third mistake that people make um, is that they take a great image and they can't wait to share it. And I, you know, I can really relate to this. You, know, you take an amazing image, you want to tell the world, you want to show the world, you want to put it on your social media account. Don't do it. If you think you've got a picture which is brilliant and would do really, really well in a photo competition, save it. Put it in a folder on your hard drive marked competition entries. Don't share it with the world. Judges like to be surprised. They like original images and they like that initial buzz of seeing something new and something amazing. Now, if you've posted it on social media, the chances are, you know, one or more of the judges will have already seen it and it loses that initial impact. So save those images, don't share them on social media, save them for competitions. Now the fourth mistake I see is probably one of the biggest ones and it's choosing the wrong category to enter your image into. Now you may have the most amazing picture in the world but if you choose a category which isn't suitable for it then because the margins are so fine when you get down to those sort of final 10 or 15 images judges will look very very carefully at how images fit the category um, when they're making their final decisions. So your photograph may be brilliant, 
but it may well have been better off in another category because the style of it would suit that category. So look at the categories carefully. Look at your images carefully. What's the main focus of your image? Which category does it best fit? You may well find that in some competitions, your amazing image might not fit any of the categories. Then my advice would be, don't enter that competition, save it for another competition where it might fit a bit better. So look at the categories very, very carefully understand what the judges are looking for and look at your portfolio with that in mind. What I've tried to do with Wild Art um, is be very, very open with people and to try and give you some help with what the judges are looking for in each of the categories, which is why we've done a lot of these sort of live events and judge interviews. So my advice would be to research the categories, go back through those videos. Uh, if you're looking to enter Wild Art in particular, so go back through those videos uh, and those interviews that I've done with the judges and think really, really hard about the categories for each of your images. Now, the final common mistake that I see people make is that they don't read the rules properly. Uh, now, the last thing you want to do is find that you have infringed a rule and invalidated your entry when you've got to that sort of final stage. So read the rules, stick to the rules, don't try and bend them, you will get found out uh, and your image will be disqualified. So we all know that photo competitions in the end are a little bit of a lottery, but you can help stack the odds in your favour. So I do hope that the hints and tips that I've given you in this video uh, you find really helpful and uh, best of luck if you enter Wild Art.